All right, guys, we're back in the shop. Uh, the track went really well. Uh, I learned a few things uh, after I came home and uh, watched the video and was editing it. And I learned a few things about what was kind of going on with the suspension. And um, so what I noticed was that <clears throat> when I slowed down, you know, a slow-mo of the car, I noticed that we weren't getting any separation here. I was actually squatting. Just a slight squat. So um, what that tells me is that, and I, I was, I kind of knew this going in that it might do that because of how much weight I took out of the car. Uh, so, and a lot of the weight we took out was actually from here back, okay? So I know we have a lot more front bias than, than rear bias. Uh, that ne not necessarily is a bad thing uh, on, in drag radial, you know, racing. Uh, we just got to get our <clears throat> our angles right on our control arms in order to get the instant center back to where it needs to be. So this is something I've been wanting to do for a while anyway, um, and that's make my own lower control arm uh, relocation mounts. Um, so I picked up some uh, plate steel. I got I got another piece back there too, uh, you know, just some regular old plate steel. It's I I made sure it's the same thickness <clears throat> as you know the the stock the uh the stock brackets okay and so basically what i want to do is just use the stock brackets and then like kind of build off of that and maybe double it so that it's uh you know nice and strong so okay so typically you wouldn't do this with uh uh the stock location springs uh you can but it's you just can't adjust it as much as you would if you had like coilovers. So we're gonna be limited to how much we can adjust it. Uh, so yeah, actually yesterday what I did was uh, I put the springs, the old springs back in. I had a set of uh, old GT springs and uh, that had only one coil cut off. So I, I put those back in <clears throat> and took out the, the four cylinder springs that had the uh, coil and a half cut off. Okay, because I think it was sitting too low back here and was causing some some angle issues, okay? So I wanted to raise it back up and then use that extra space that you can see, I got space now, okay? I, I'm gonna use that space to lower the rear control arm a little bit to get that to get that lower control arm to be angled up a little bit, okay? So I know I've talked about this in other videos about the instant center and all that. Uh, if you really want like a really good explanation, go to Turbo John. He's got a really good explanation on instant center and uh, kind of like <clears throat> how to make these drag radials work. Uh, it actually worked really good. You know, the way I had it set up in the white car, uh, you could see in a couple of slow-mo videos that you would get some nice separation, but that was, every car is different because of the weight, okay? When you have, <clears throat> different weights your your instant center moves around Okay, so what the angles that worked on that car may not work on this car because <clears throat> In my opinion, I think that the instant center is further forward in this car Okay uh, Just because of the fact that how much weight I took out, you know, I cut the whole back of the trunk out uh, the, the bumpers, you know, the big heavy bumpers gone um <clears throat> the torque box is actually a little bit lighter than what I cut out. Uh, all these seat belt mounts that are behind this panel here, that whole entire plate's gone. Uh, the doors are gutted. So, you know, you can kind of imagine from here back, it's a lot lighter. So, so we're going to go ahead and make those brackets and we'll put some adjustability into it. And, uh, and yeah, we'll be able to make adjustments at the track or, you know, Get this thing back to separating a little bit instead of squatting like it was and you can go back and look at the video on the slow-mo and you can kind of see what i'm talking about where the you could see the trunk moving down um really the the gap between the wheel and the <clears throat> the fender here was kind of squashing a little bit and maybe it was kind of neutral but what we need is we need it to separate okay we need to smash that tire into the ground so let me start off, I'm gonna use um, some cardboard and just kind of cut a little template to see you know, how I want it to look and, and then we'll transfer that to the uh, plate steel and uh, start cutting it on my little bandsaw there and see what we come up with and uh, we'll start fitting it and then I'll come back when I get little, you know, a little bit done and, 
you know, we get close to welding it on. Okay guys, so here's kind of what I came up with here. Um, so I cut a little piece here to kind of match the, the uh, contour of the, the control or the, the bracket here. And you can see how that's going to fit just like that, kind of wrapping around that radius. And it looks like um, this is about, I don't know, two inches, inch, inch and three quarters maybe. And it should give me about three holes, okay? So if I go half inch holes, you know, I could probably do a hole here and a hole here. So it'd give me three holes of adjustment in like half inch in increments. So I think that's probably gonna be plenty for what I'm doing here. Um, I'm, you know, sticking with the stock springs, there's no way I can go more than about an, an inch anyway, okay? So if I do, maybe I can do one inch increments or maybe half inch increments and maybe get, might be able to get four holes total. I'm not sure, we'll see. But that, sh that should be plenty for, like I said, for what I'm doing. Uh, I know I've seen the lower control arm brackets a lot longer than that, so you could really adjust it. But like I said, we don't have coilovers and I'm not gonna worry about that. I don't think we need it to go that far. So let me get these cut. I'm gonna go ahead and transfer this over to here. It almost fits perfect on this uh, piece of plate steel. Okay, just cut that there and there. And um, yeah, so I'll need four of those. Uh, and then if I decide to double it up, we'll need four more, but the entire length. So it'll uh, kind of capture it. And then a, probably another piece on the back too. We'll see. Uh, let me get these cut first and then we'll uh, go from there. Alrighty guys, so we got them, got the four pieces cut, and then I, what I did was I clamped them together and used the uh, angle grinder with a sanding wheel to get them all exactly the same. So that's a little tip that if you're trying to make all the parts the exact same, you clamp them together and kind of grind them down until they're all uh, perfect. So, alrighty, let's see what we got here. It's a little dark under here, but you guys can kind of see what we got going on, how close we are pretty close we still need to do a little bit more grinding um, off the back there but yeah we're getting close so let me keep grinding it and then um, once we get it perfect we'll uh, go from there okay guys so we got the plates uh, all drilled out uh, these are half inch increments so from here to here is a half inch and from here to here is the half inch uh, I kind of had to uh, go the first the first hold down is going to be about an inch maybe a little more than an inch just because I got to avoid that where it's going to be welded okay because you can't really put a hole where they're where you're welding so uh, the, the first hole is going to be quite a bit further but then I have finer adjustment so it's going to be like this here as you can see the first hole is going to go from there to there which should be okay. I don't think that's gonna be a problem. I mean, may, maybe later on I could, uh, I don't, cause I don't think I'm gonna need doublers, but if I did do doublers, uh, I could then add another hole in between because there would be, you know, an extra plate here, but I just don't feel comfortable drilling a hole through the weld. That would be kind of weird, but I think, I think this will work. Um, and initially about an inch is where I wanna start because that's about how much space I have now that I've changed the springs uh, in between the, you know, the top lip here and the, and the tire is now about an inch. So I think an inch would put it right where it needs to be. And then we can go a little more from there. It, it, but if we do go more, um, I would have to go back to like a stock spring without any coil cut off, which would then bring my ride height back to where it needs to be. So. I'm gonna have to play with the springs. You know, if I, if I wanna adjust it any more than an inch, inch and a half, I'm gonna have to play with the springs. 
So I don't really want to do that, you know, at that point, then I would just go ahead and get coilovers. But uh, for now, I want to try it this way. I know another guy who does this. Uh, I forget the name of his YouTube channel, but I just actually watched it today. And he does this exact same thing that I'm doing with stock springs. So. Okay, so we got the bracket tacked in uh, on both sides. I got two tacks here and uh, two tacks on this side. And you can see the, the uh, I got it to where it slides nice and easily through the bracket. All the way up and down. Uh, and then what I'm going to have to do is put like a brace back here too. So I'll, I'll run a plate back here across to you know kind of box this in a little bit and i could possibly even do something on the bottom too because there's a little bit of a there's quite a bit of space between here and there that i could you know i could box in on the bottom as well so so yeah it's a little bit tedious work because the angles are weird um if you can tell uh it's not square, so it kind of kicks this way. So you, your holes, when you, you have to kind of twist your holes a little bit. So I had to kind of realign my holes to make it to make it right. But I got it to work, uh, and I had to trim a little bit more off the one of the sides. But everything looks good now. So let me get that the rest of the way welded in, and then um, make a little, like I said, make a couple braces for the back. Okay guys, so I went ahead and decided to make the doublers uh, just because, you know, I have the whole thing apart and it'd be better to do it now than to, you know, find out later on that it wasn't strong enough and I have to take it back all apart. So uh, I took my time and kind of transferred the holes from uh, here over to my plates and I actually added another hole because I was telling you guys that I, I was kind of worried about putting a hole where the weld is, but now that I have the doubler, um, it doesn't matter. I can go ahead and put a hole there. So this is gonna go basically like this, okay? And it kind of captures the my bottom little box there, okay? With the top bracket, the you know, the factory bracket. So yeah, I took my time and got all the holes lined up perfect. And I made four of those, so all I have to do is once I get this welded in, I can use, you, you know, I can just drill a hole through here on this side and that side, and um, that'll be my, uh, another hole of adjustment. So, yeah, let me go ahead and start welding those in, and then um, we'll put this thing together, and we'll pick a hole and set it on the ground and see what it looks like. Hopefully, um, you know, we have enough adjustment to where it'll work with the springs I have. If not, like I said before, you know, we can buy some springs. We can, you know, get some regular stock GT springs with no coils cut off. And I know that would work as well. So. We got it tacked in and uh, the bolt goes in and out nice. No issues. Oh, by the way, I did have to get a longer bolt, uh, obviously because now we're thicker here. Okay, we got another plate. So I had to get another bolt that was about an inch longer. So should be good to go. Alrighty guys, it's finished. Uh, this is the next day actually, because I wanted to let the paint dry before I go ahead and put all the uh, 
<clears throat> bolts and brackets and everything. Um, but yeah, it looks really good. I already did the other side. I already mounted the uh, control arm and everything fits really good. I made sure every hole runs nice and freely. So I tested out each hole with the bolt. And um, yeah, I just had to kind of clean up the holes a little bit. But other than that, everything came out really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it, put this side back together. And then uh, we'll lower it down and see exactly what it looks like. And uh, yeah, that'll be the end of this video. Uh, we won't know how it works until we get it to the track and um, take some video um, of the outside of the car again and kind of go over that and see what the suspension's doing. So, uh, but yeah, let me finish this up and uh, yeah, we'll take a look at it. so that's it uh, we basically got it back um, by moving it that uh, a little over an inch on the bar it brought the ride height back to where it was originally so that should work uh, I think we'll be okay um, hopefully it doesn't settle anymore because it's really pretty tight um, but you know, like I said, worst case scenario, I can order some uh, stock springs and maybe a couple sets and then cut them in at different lengths to get the ride height exactly where I want it because that's important too. So, but anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I just wanted to show you guys that uh, making those brackets and um, hopefully it helps us on the uh, at the track, you know, getting it to hook better. So, but anyway, that's going to do it, guys. Check you all later.